Psalm chapter 40. Psalm, <laughs> Psalm chapter 40. Children's Church, you're dismissed to Children's Church. If you have a mustache or a driver's license, you do not qualify for Children's Church. <clears throat> Psalm chapter 40. God is so awesome. This is the last of new song. This is actually something that be about four weeks ago. And the way it worked out, it just didn't, it just didn't, didn't pan out, so to speak. And I believe there's a reason. I know there's a reason why. God's got a reason for everything. Look at somebody and tell them God's got a reason for everything. God's got a reason. <laughs> Next week we're going to talk about the covenant. Then we've got Easter. We're going to talk about the covenant. It's going to be so awesome. Bring everybody you can. It's going to be an awesome, awesome time talking about the covenant of God. And, and, and you can look at David and Jonathan and see the covenant that they did. And when you see their covenant, you'll see also the covenant that Jesus did on the cross. Amen? <clears throat> Psalm chapter 40, verse 1. Y'all read this with me. Psalm chapter 40, verses 1 through 3. All right? I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me. And heard my cry. How many can say that today? Amen. How many can say you're still waiting? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Remember, sometimes it puts up a yield light. It's okay. Don't go through the yellow. You know, uh, they asked my children one time, what does green mean? It says it means go. What does red mean? It means stop. What does yellow mean? Go real fast. <laughs> okay. When God puts up a yield sign, don't go real fast. <clears throat> he brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Out of the mire clay, and he set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. He has put a new song in my mouth. They'll say that again. He has put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear. Wow, there's a reason for all this. And shall trust in the Lord. Let's give the Lord some, let's talk to him. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. We know, God, you're alive and well on the throne. Father, we trust you this day, God. Your word is powerful. It is anointed. Father, your word, you said, would never come by to you void. Father, there's people in here this day, God, that came in with, a, with one song who's going to leave with another song. They came in defeated, but they're going to leave out with victory. Father, through faith, we know this day is your day, and we trust you all the way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. Get somebody, get somebody a high five and tell you're glad you're in the house of God with them. A high five, a low five, some kind of five. If you're being, you get four and a quarter. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and Brandon's, Brandon's four and three quarters. <laughs> I mean, you can see it every day you turn on the TV, and then you got you got our Secretary of State telling us things are getting better. You got our Secretary of Defense saying things are getting worse. So which is it? Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Getting worse. It's getting worse. You know, you can tell me all day long. You can give me a lemon and tell me all day long it's an orange and tell me to go ahead and suck on it as if my eyes are popping out of my head. Still tell me it's an orange. It is not an orange. It's a lemon. Amen. Amen. So, so, so today, but the, the world's in bad shape morally, politically, spiritually. It's bankrupt. And they desperately need a new song, but all the world has is the same old song. I, I, I really hate to hear the political speeches that are coming up now because I, I'm hearing the same old stuff I've heard all this time that they're going to fight for the middle, man. As the middle class closes in and getting smaller and smaller, they're, they're saying they're fighting for the middle class. They're going to do everything they can for the middle class for the guys that are in there. That, that came in because they were going to help us. They ain't help us. That's right. Amen. I don't know about you, but my paycheck keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Matter of fact, my money talks. That's right. It says goodbye. Amen. Amen. So, so it's the same old song. And at times, our old song gets tiresome. But we listen to this now. I want you to watch this. This is where we stop from all those other times we're going to something fresh and new. But look. A rut develops and you get stuck in a rut. It's a bad place to be. Do you know that God is sick of you being in a rut? 
Why? God's sick of you being in a rut. Yes, he's sick of you being in a rut. Because as long as you're in a rut, you can't do anything. So watch this. Well, watch. Look, look. You, listen now. What we need is, is to sing a new song, a song of joy, enthusiasm, praise, and victory. So here we go. Here's rut. How many, how many like acrostics? Acrostics. Spell out a word and tell what that word means. Well, here, here's what. You know, one, one definition of rut is a grave with both ends kicked out of it. Amen? That's a pretty rough place to be. So rut, watch this, R. R stands for restricted. If you find yourself in a rut today, you'll find yourself very restricted in what you can do and what you can do for God, what you can do for yourself and for your family because you are in a restricted mode. Also, you, useless. A rut is a useless place to be because honestly, the only person that wins when you're in a rut is Satan. Amen. The only one. So, so, so restricted, useless, and T is trench. You find yourself buckled down. Uh, you find yourself down in the hole. You're just looking up and seeing a little bit because you're in that trench. And I don't like being there. How about you? Amen. I don't like being in a rut. Here's the symptom. You say, well, that sounds kind of like where I'm at. Well, here's some symptoms. If you got these symptoms, go ahead. You ain't got to look at the person beside you and say, I'm in a rut. Matter of fact, you ain't got to look at the person beside you and say, it sounds like you're in a rut. Don't do that. <laughs> First, there's a, a, a lack of movement. Because when you're in a rut, the rut dictates your every move. When you're in that rut, you can't go forward. You can't go backwards. You just kind of go wherever the rut lets you be. You just kind of stay in the rut. Wherever the rut goes, that's where you go. Think about it when you're riding down a dirt road or riding on a bicycle. Have you ever rode on a bicycle and tried to ride down the railroad tracks the wrong, or along with the railroad track and landed in uh, between the cement or the asphalt and the railroad track? You can try your best to go where you want to, but you're going to follow that rut the same way in our life. Also, a lack of interest. You see, I'm stuck mentally now, so why do I even care? Because if I care, that just upsets me because now I can't do anything about it because I'm in a rut. So now, mentally, I just kind of shut down. I'm kind of going by the rut, letting the rut drive my life. I see people every day that are letting the rut drive their life. I've had the rut drive my life before, and I can tell you that's not a pleasant place to be. Because when the rut's in control, you've lost all control. And then finally, there's a lack of victory. Matter of fact, you, 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 you don't, honestly, you don't even care if there's victory or not in life because you're just going along with the flow, kind of, you know, like, you know, uh, even dead fish can go downstream. Did you know that? And so there you're, you're, you're in this rut. Now we're going to talk about three people. I'm not going to keep you long because I don't want you to get in a rut in this service. <laughs> amen. Who said amen? Oh, Daniel. <laughs> My own people started throwing, but look, make sure that it's not canned vegetables. Make sure it is fresh. Okay. Here we go. David, he lost his delight or lost his joy. Jonah... He lost his direction, and Jeremiah was not a bullfrog. <laughs> Jeremiah lost his discernment. So real quickly, we're going to talk about these three guys, and then we're going to talk about how they got out of it. First, David lost his delight or joy. He decided, now none of us here have ever done this. So I'm not talking about you. Matter of fact, look at somebody and say, he's probably not talking about me. Go and get that over with. <laughs> get ready. David decided that God's way was not the right way. Go go. So he decided to do it his way. Oh, now, now you're meddling now, preacher. Yeah, I'm meddling. He decided that God didn't know what he was talking about. He was going to do it his way. So watch this. Don't, don't hit anything else yet. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. Watch this now. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 11, when it was time for kings to be out at war, he decided he wasn't going to fight this time. He decided he'd send his guys out to fight for him. He'd fight from the armchair. Well, come on now. How many here has ever fought from the armchair? You sit the troops out, you sit in the armchair. I mean, the lazy boy. Amen. 
So he's sitting in the lazy boy. And now it's getting on his nerves because he's not doing what he's supposed to. He's not fighting. And so he goes out. And something you have to understand. Even if you disengage, listen carefully, everybody in here. Even if you disengage in the battle, Satan never disengages. That's right. Even if you decide, well, I don't think I'm going to sit this one out. Guess what? He's still fighting. Amen. Even if they were here, I, I'm going I'm I'm to sit this battle out. I'm not going to fight it because, hey, hey, I'm going to love fighting. I think I'm going to sit down for a while. Guess what? He's still fighting. And if he's still fighting, he's going to come at you. And if you're disengaged, then he can get you in all kinds of ways. He can get you in a rut. So here goes David. He winds up seeing Bathsheba taking a bath. People have talked about Bathsheba over the years. It wasn't Bathsheba's fault. She was doing what she normally did. He should have been out fighting. Amen. So, so, so because he wasn't out fighting, because he was just, just stirred on the inside, because he wasn't doing, wasn't fighting the battle, then, then he, he winds up where he shouldn't be. He sees Bathsheba, he calls her over, and, and he has relations with her. She comes back and says, hey, dude, I'm pregnant. And David goes, that ain't good. <laughs> so, so David goes, and he gets Uriah, her husband, and calls her in and says, you go to, come bring me some information. You live with your wife tonight. He goes and sleeps on the porch. He says, my brother's right in the field, sleeping on the field. I'm going to sleep like they are. And he goes, well, plan A's gone. Here's plan B. Joanne, I want you to take Uriah and put him at the front of the battle and get him killed. That's what it is. So it's, so it's, it, it, it's adultery, <laughs> lies and deceit, murder, and then the baby that they had, the fruit of that relationship withered and died. So now I want you to see something. Right here, Psalm, Psalm let's look at Psalm 51. I'm going to read it with y'all. Watch this. First, let me show you something. Here's what he found out. He was about to find out, listen carefully, you can never go so far that God cannot restore you. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. You can never go so far that God cannot restore you. He can put you back on top again. Amen. So here is in Psalm 51. Yes. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and sin, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou, hast, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear. Make, make, where we at? Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Here it is. Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. Woo! You know what? A lot of us would be a whole lot better off today if we could just say that one prayer right there. God created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. Cast out away the cast me out away from thy presence. Take out away thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. That's David. Next. Jonah. Jonah lost his direction. He decided that God's way was not the right way, so he went another way. Matter of fact, let me just tell you this. He was told to go to, to Nineveh, which is the capital of Assyria. He didn't like Assyria. Assyria were the meanest, cruelest, most terrifying people ever to walk the face of the earth. They, they actually helped uh, with the crucifixion and bending the cross. These guys had some influence in the cross because it was the cruelest, meanest way for a person to die a slow, terrible death. So, so, so they had some input in that, but, but here, here, these guys, when they come into town, when they left, there'd be, a, there'd be a pyramid of skulls, people's skin pulled off their body while they're alive and thrown over the, over the walls. The women and children would be taken away to be slaves, and the men would be killed and be put up on, put up, uh, be, be have, have, have rods stuck up in them, and they'd be buried in the ground with it up to their, up to there as they're hanging. These guys are bad. And Jonah said, you know, God, you missed this one. You don't give grace to those mean people. How many have ever decided who God 
is grace to them. All right. I've done it. God said, go talk to that person. So Lord, I'll talk to him. Amen. Lord, how about talk, he says, talk to this person? Lord, I really rather wouldn't. You know, but since, since he decided that, 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 that he knew better, so instead of going 500 miles to Assyria, he went 2,500 miles uh, from, not from Assyria, but he went 200 miles to Joppa. So here, all right, Joppa, he goes up here and he goes, so here he goes, watch this now. 500 miles versus 2,500 miles. And so he gets in here and he finds himself in trouble. What he's getting ready to find out is, watch this. What he's about to discover is, you can never so, go so far that God can't find you. Oh, y'all got to come on now. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. <laughs> you can never go so far that God can't find you. And when he finds you, he can still use you. Amen? I'm going to read this for you again. Here's Jonah chapter 2. Jonah, he runs and he winds up in the ship and the ship... Uh, there's a big storm. He tells all the guys, I'm the reason. And so they throw him overboard. Good guys, huh? <laughs> then Jonah prayed to the Lord and then a big old fish got him. Can you imagine? It's bad enough you're already thrown overboard and this great old big fish comes along and eats you. Talk about a bad day. But you don't understand something. That fish was great because without that fish you'd have drowned and died. Amen. So even, in, even if you're in the belly of a whale today, Thank God for grace. Yeah. Amen. So, so, <clears throat> then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods come past me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again unto the holy temple. The waters can pass me about even to the soul. His death closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars were about me forever. Yet hast thou brought me up, brought my life up from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee into the holy temple. They that deserve my advantage forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed. Sac salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish. I love this word. My mommy said, well, what you say? Then I'm going to pop you. And she was in the church the day I preached on Jonah. And I looked at Mama and I said, Mama, I know you told me never to say it, but it's right here in the Bible. I said, the fish vomited. And just for clarity, I looked right at her again and I said, Mama, the fish vomited. <laughs> Him out. He was in such bad shape, he gave the fish heartburn. <laughs> now, can you imagine? He's three days in this fish before he realized he wanted it. I think I can understand it. I'm going down. Get me out of here. He's in there three days, but he finally realizes that no matter where you go, you can't run, you can't hide, but he needed to do something. Then finally, there's a hundred of them out here fast, sort of kind, of, right? <laughs> Jeremiah. Out of all the guys, the guy I really feel for the most is Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I want you to watch this now. Je Jeremiah lost his discernment. He decided that God's way was not the right way, so he wanted to go no way. He wanted to quit. Let me kind of tell you a little bit about Jeremiah. Jeremiah prophesied for about 40 years. He was caught from his mother's womb. Now, how would you like to have a church that nobody ever got saved and all they did was complain? How'd you like to have that? Every time he talked, they tried to beat him. They tried to hurt him. He talked and had no converts for 20 years. He's out there telling God's message, but nothing is happening. It's so bad and he stays in so much trouble they call him the weeping prophet. Now, how would you like to have that kind of ministry? You know God calls you. You know you're doing God's work, but you see no converts. All you hear is complaints all the time. And people try to hurt you. Why? Poor Jeremiah. But he was getting to find out someone to tell him, listen carefully, please. Because you might be right now here thinking, I'm kind of like that. 
I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm not going to see what I'm expecting to happen. I'm expecting to see dynamic growth, and I'm not seeing dynamic growth. I'm not seeing anything but pain. Matter of fact, I feel like maybe Jeremiah was a bullfrog, and he got hit with a no raid. I don't know. Watch this. Listen carefully. This will set some of y'all free right now. This one statement will set you free. He was about to discover you never judge your ministry by its fruit, but by your faithfulness. Ah. Oh. Woo! God doesn't judge your ministry by your fruit. He judges your ministry by your faithfulness. For 20 years, Jeremiah had been faithful. For 20 years, Jeremiah had done it. For 20 years, he'd been kicked, he'd been beat, he'd been slapped. For 20 years, he had just, it was just bad. He's the weeping prophet. Nothing's going on. Nothing's happening. And so watch what he does. I know this is a little right, and I started reading it for you, but I want to put it all on one page. Oh, Lord, thou hast deceived me. And I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in daily derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out and cried violence and spoil because the word of God was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. Uh-oh. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary before I even told when I tried to hold back, it just hurt. Because I had to let it rip. And I could not stay. I could not stop. For I heard the fame of many... Many fear on every side, reports say they, and we were reported. All my familiars watched from my halting, saying, for adventure, he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me. Now, God's talked to him. The Lord is with me as a terrible one. Therefore, many persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall be forgotten. But, O Lord of hosts, thou triest the righteous, and seest the reins and the heart. Let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I opened my cause. Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered my soul of the poor from the hand of the evildoers. He's halfway through, 20 years in, he's about ready to quit, and he says, I want to so bad, but there's something inside of me. God's word is stirring inside of me. Some of you in here right now, you've been wanting to quit for a long time, but if you'll stop and let the word of God dwell with you, that's why Satan tries to keep you out of the church. He tries to keep you out of the word. He tries to keep your mind out of other ways because every time the word gets in you, it's like a fire shut up in your bones. Yeah. Praise the Lamb of God. God has not let you down. I go, wow, I don't believe it. 
I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up all side of a horrible pit, and I had a miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it here, and shall trust in the Lord. So watch this now. There's, just, there's four things here in these little verses. There's three verses, there's four things. I'm going to be quick about it, kind of. Number one, confession. Uh, that's a hard word, isn't it? Confession. Isn't that a hard word? Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, I don't want to tell you. He already knows. So, why don't you want to tell him? You see, see, you got to tell God, I'm in a rut. Can, can you do that? God, not, not, not tell me, I don't want to, I mean, I'll help you, but I'm not going to tell you, Scott. Amen. God, I'm in a rut. How hard is it to admit that you're in a rut? How hard is it to admit that, that, that you, you're, you're, you're just going through the motions and, and, and you really don't see God moving in your life like you want to and like you think you should? Or you're judging your ministry by your fruit instead of your faithfulness. And all this stuff that's happening around you and it's hurting and it's really driving you crazy. What's this? Confession. You see, God's going to discern it anyway. So first, you've got to release it. God, I'm hurting. God, I'm in a rut. He's sitting there going, I know. I just wanted you to, I just wanted to, you know what I'm saying, see if you saw it. It was like, like, like a man told his wife, you know, she said, they told her something. She said, well, oh, I forgive, I, I have forgiven you and I forgot you. But every time he'd do something, she'd bring it back up again. He said, I thought you forgave me and forgot it. She says, I did, but I want you to remember that I forgave you <laughs> and forgot it. God wants us to line our confession up with him. That's, that's what confession is. He already knows it, but he wants you to admit it. So you tell him, God, I'm going to run. God, God, I'm going south. I need your help. And when you do, you wait for him. And he'll respond. Wait. We live in this instant society. I walked down to Sierra the other day, and I saw all this instant up bill. Then I saw one that said, this takes three minutes. I said, throw that away. Three minutes. Took too long. I wanted the instant oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Three minutes was like, wow, it would take forever. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had a man, uh, one of my family members, talk about how, how when he come up, it was out for plumbing and all the stuff going on. I said, yeah. I sit around here if the microwave goes out, we're having hard times. <laughs> Release it. And wait. Wait. That doesn't mean stop doing not that doesn't mean stop working for the Lord. It just means wait for him. Wait for him. He'll respond. So first, confession. He'll discern it. He'll respond. Number two, cleansing. The Bible tells us God's going to deliver. He said, he brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on the rock. That means the slimiest, hardest to get a hold of pit you can't get out of. It's a rut that you can't get out of. Because every time you can't even get your hands on it because it's so, so slishy and slushy. And God says, I'll get you out of there if you trust me. But you got to trust him. Look, there's cleansing. And then number three, not only will God deliver, but God will direct. As he said, once I set him up on, set me up, he established my goings. The Bible says that the steps of righteous man are ordered by the Lord. He'll direct your paths. And all your ways to acknowledge him, he'll direct your paths. And so I got to confess, when I'm in a rut, don't look inside. It wouldn't be in a rut to look for her or him, them. No, just God. I'm in a rut. I need you to help me. And Lord, if you get me out of the rut, you know what? Maybe they'll get out of the rut too. Don't look, don't place blame, confess. Number two, allow God to cleanse you. Number three, have that, have that confidence that he's going to direct you. Here, here it goes. I like this part right here. And the Bible says in verse, verse three, it tells us, and he put a new song in my mouth, and praise unto our God, many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. He'll put a delight back in you. 
My, our, I like to think about this. Just a quick way to do it. There's an advertisement over the church door. Come in and let God set you up because then he'll keep you up and he'll tune you up. That's Psalm 40. He sets you up. He set me up. He keeps me up. And he tunes me up. Now, 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 now so we start climbing. Now, now, now God's going to need to climb out of this rut. There's three people that I need to climb out of this rut for. Three. Y'all say three. Three. The first person I need to climb out of this rut for is me. I don't know about you, but I just get tired of sitting in the rut. I get tired of it. I get tired of being stuck, can't move forward, can't move backwards. I, I'm just kind of hindered in everything I do. I, I want to get out of the rut. I'm ready to see God do something. So first for myself. Secondly, for others. The Bible says others will see it and they're going to praise God. It's awesome when people look at you and go, well, wasn't that a guy that was... You know, Satan had him a good old stronghold. Oh, look at him now. He's up there worshiping God and praising God. Wow, if he can do it, I can do it. If God can use him, God can use me. Wow, hey, hey, if God can do some of them, he can do it for me. So first, climb. God, let God give you that new song. You climb out of that rut. First for yourself, do it for others. Here's my favorite of all. Go ahead. Drum roll. Satan. Satan needs to know there's some people that will not bow to him. There's some people that will not get so far down that they won't look back up and see God do something. And Satan needs to know there's some people in here to realize no matter how far they've gone, God can still use them. God can still deliver them. God can still take them out of their rut. God can still put their feet on solid rock. God can still do things to them that Satan cannot do. Satan needs to know that God is in control, not him. God is in control. And God can get to us. Praise right now. Yeah. Praise you, praise. Y'all praise you, praise. Glory. 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 Satan is a liar. Satan is a liar. Let the church start singing their new song. Yeah. Satan is a liar. God is in control. Come on, fellas. Come on. Get a new song going up here. Satan is a liar. Somebody say it. Satan is a liar. Satan is a liar. God is the truth. God is the truth.
need God to do something for you, step up. Step up. You need salvation, step up. You need God to reaffirm you, step up. You need a fresh touch from God, step up. You need God to give you some direction, step up. You need God to restore your joy, step up. David said, don't take my joy away, restore it, God did. Jeremiah found joy in the middle of the worst of stuff. Step up here and pray. Step up here and pray. God's got you. God's got you. God's got you. Satan will let you to quit. Stay in that rut. God's got you. He's got your back. God's got your back. God's got your back. God's got your back. Got your back. Thank you, Lord. Restore the joy. Restore the joy. Restore the joy, Lord. Restore the joy in my heart, Lord. Father, I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for praise is having to come out of my lips, Lord. Instead of terrible stuff, praise coming out of my lips. Praise. Praise coming out of my lips. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You're in total control, Lord. And we give it to you right now. Total control. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Take me from the mark. 
And I'm not sure if we're going to stay on the fruit of the Spirit, per se, and the way we've been going, or I might just talk about the joy of Psalm chapter 40. I'm not sure yet. I'm asking God to show me, but, but I'm going in one of those directions. But God's doing something special. Tuesday night, I want you to listen carefully. I know Tuesdays are hard for people. They're working, they've got school, they've got all kinds of things. This isn't a beat up session, this is just an information session to tell you something. When people come in here, they come in here and they stay because they find love, they find acceptance, they find a message, they find hope. Yeah. And many times we run them away because we don't know how to talk to them. All right? All right. This thing right here has got me in more trouble than these big things right down there. Amen. And so Tuesday night we're talking about how to talk. And we've been going for quite some time. And and I'm, I'm mad about it too because my wife will stop taking breath and she's through. I'm going to make something. And she'll go, I'm not through yet. I'm like, I'm sorry, dear. I thought you were through. She said, I just stopped taking breath. She said, I'm not like you. You can go ahead and give a whole paragraph and never stop to talk, never stop to breathe. <laughs> so, so again and watch this you might think people are drawn to an answer man people aren't drawn to the answer man people are drawn to the listening man Amen. to the listener because anybody can give you advice but not anybody can listen so listening is a very important thing and somebody I've listened before people say you know exactly what the sad say anything I just listen well, they, they, they talk their own answers out. So again, Tuesday night, start doing it. Doing stuff like that. So if you get a chance, and I know it's hard for so many of you, and I'm not here to make you feel bad. I'm just here to tell you. It's here. And get a hold of it. If you can't be here, it has got it online. You have to talk to him. We're going to try to have it. Can we hook it to our webpage? We can flip right over to him. We'll, we'll try it anyway. We'll try to fix it. You can go to our webpage and flip over to Eddie. Well, that didn't quite sound right either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm looking for spiritual uplift and I'll flip a page there's any going. <laughs> but but he's, he's, he's still right now recording. So it's, on, it's online now. Our services are online. And we're going to try maybe to even do it live. A live feed so people can get here on Sunday morning. But some good stuff coming up. Uh, so find out from Eddie. He's got it on the board over too. I can get to it. There's also outlines. Get those outlines, listen to it online. You even have outlines online. But, but this stuff is good because people are hurting out there. They don't need you to have all the answers. They need you to listen. Really listen and care. Okay, tonight, tonight we're going to talk about some type of joy. We're going to have a good time. Amen. Tuesday night we're talking about talking and listening. And then next week, the covenant. The power of the covenant. David and Jonathan is a form of what Jesus did on the cross with his disciples. So then the following is Easter. Easter's going to be awesome. It's always awesome. 10.30, we're going to have a good time. And this is going to be different than it. Like last, last couple of years have been different than anything ever done. Like Mary's communion was awesome. And then last year, the shadow of the cross. This year's going to be the same way. It's going to be different, absolutely different. And and, and I'm, I'm going to leave it under that. It's different. But it's going to be awesome. Amen? Amen. Everybody happy? Amen. If you're happy, you know that your face know it. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. God is awesome. All, all the time. time. All the time. God is awesome.